Hello everyone. We are at the third session of our video series in module 6. In the previous two sessions, we discussed about mode FETs and HPDs. And today, our topic will be related to something we have already familiarized. Right. So far, we have seen how um, the electrons in your heterojunctions and the quantum wells respond to the applied electric field uh, when it's parallel to the interface. In fact, we have discussed regarding parallel transport. In today's session, let's see what happens when. Uh, one sec. Let's see what happens uh, when your transport is perpendicular. See, at certain circumstances, it is possible for your electrons to move through the barrier or which means to move perpendicular to a potential barrier forming the so-called uh, perpendicular transport right and the basic mechanism behind perpendicular transport is tunneling and the there we have familiarized with resonant tunneling let's uh, go for a quick recap of what is resonant tunnel uh, when we studied resonant tunneling we also saw that this tunneling current through these heterojunctions showed uh, areas of negative differential resistance or the NDR region and which arised uh, when the current level decreases for increasing voltage due to some particular reason. We will see that. In fact, this NDR effect, the negative differential resistance effect was first observed um, by Isaki when uh, he was studying the normal p-n junction tunnel diodes and later together with uh, the scientist Su, Isaki and Su proposed that this effect would also be observed in the um, current through quantum wells and that was how that uh, this NDR effect was further studied in the case of quantum wells. The operation of the NDR quantum wells the negative differential resistance quantum wells in the electronic devices led to the effect called resonant tunneling effect the RTE. Let us see what is this uh, effect we have already seen resonant tunneling what is that let us uh, have a quick recap. Basically the resonant tunneling effect takes place when the when your current uh, is traveling from a structure formed uh, by say two thin barriers and you have the quantum well in between that is nothing but your aluminum gallium arsenide in gallium arsenide region right you had the electrons moving from the uh, doped aluminum gallium arsenide to gallium arsenide right and when we have aluminum gallium arsenide gallium arsenide aluminum gallium arsenide we had a quantum well formation the same thing we are considering here consider the structure so uh, here we have seen the uh, we are showing the conduction band of a double heterojunction right so this is aluminum gallium arsenide gallium arsenide and aluminum gallium arsenide it's a double heterojunction placed back to back forming a quantum well in between. Now uh, in order to tunneling to take place we make sure that the thickness of this quantum well must be very small in the range of say 5 to 10 nanometers and this ensures that there is only one allowed energy level E1. See in all these figures I have, I have shown only single energy level E1 right when we know that uh, quantum wells are capable of forming quantized energy levels. So for that we have taken the condition that the thickness of this quantum well is extremely small in the range of uh, maybe 10 nanometers so that there is only one electron energy level present and the well is made from the lightly doped or nearly intrinsic gallium arsenide and they are surrounded on both sides by aluminum gallium arsenide as I have said and even the further outer layers the further outer layers are made of uh, n type gallium arsenide we have intrinsic or very lightly doped gallium arsenide 
aluminum gallium arsenate region on both sides and then we have heavily endoped gallium arsenide region and this gallium arsenide region at this uh, end is for the electrical contacts right that's it so this is our concern this three region is our concern we want our electrons to tunnel from this region to this crossing the potential well let's see what happens initially when the voltage is increasing the electron energy uh, in our n plus gallium arsenide increases right and until the value 2 e1 where is it here yeah. 2 times e1 by e is reached the electrons in the energy located in near our fermi level see they will coincide with the fermi level of E1 and the electrons can easily tunnel. So in this case when a voltage is 2 E1 by E resonance occurs and the coefficient of your transmission uh, this increases very sharply and because of this what happens with an increase in voltage there is a, increase, a corresponding increase in the current right so what has happened as the voltage was increasing the electrons energy in the n plus gallium arsenide region increases see uh, the electrons are also acquiring energy from the source once the voltage reaches 2 times e1 by e the energy of the electrons uh, located near the Fermi level they coincide with that of the energy level E1 and at that instant resonance occurs and the coefficient of our transmission they increases very sharply at this condition what happens at this condition there is a very large flow of electrons from the left region to the right region and this forms the region 1 to 2 with increase in voltage after 2 e1 by e the electrons can tunnel through the barrier because the energy of the electrons the Fermi energy coincides with that of the energy level e1 allowing tunneling okay now when your energy is further increased in this case when your voltage is even greater than much much greater than 2 times e1 by e the energy level of the well see is located below the fermi level and because of this the current start decreasing and this forms the NDR or the negative differential resistance. And finally for even higher voltages, the current again rises due to thermionic emission in this case. So what has happened when this is your interface and there is a applied electric field perpendicular to the interface we are giving uh, initial voltages when a voltage reaches the value 2 e1 by e the fermi level and energy level coincides there is an increase in current when the voltage is further increased the fermi levels falls below your energy level because of which there is no increase in current in fact the current decreases forming the negative differential resistance and even after this some uh, some point when your voltage is further increased there is a corresponding increase in current and this increase in current is not due to tunneling it's because of thermionic emission through the barrier and this is what we call the resonant tunnel effect these are the points that we have uh, discussed so far 
I shall be sharing the slide and this notes. So I hope I can skip through this. This is what I have been uh, saying so far. That's it. Right. When we use this effect, the resonant tunneling effect to manufacture diodes, such diodes or such devices are called resonant tunneling diodes. And uh, uh, see these are just normal diodes except that across this junction of the diode, the mechanism of electron flow is resonant tunneling. That's it. And these diodes are basically used for uh, microwave applications. And how do you uh, measure how good this uh, device is or this diode is? The figure of merit for RTD, the resonant tunneling diode is PVCR. The peak to value current ratio. It's nothing but uh, from this we can see. See, is the ratio between the uh, maximum current at the region 2 and the minimum current in this region. The ratio between the maximum current at this region, 0.2, to the minimum current at 0.3. This ratio is called PVCR, peak to value, valley current ratio. So this is one important uh, parameter in the case of RTDs. Also we have the um, current density. Current density is also an important factor in the case of RTDs. So, um, the value of this uh, figure of merit that is PVCR uh, in the case of um, our aluminum gallium arsenide, gallium arsenide structures, the PVCR may be up to 10, value of 10 can be reached. And uh, when it comes to indium arsenide kind of indium kind of slayers, this can be even improved, right? Now, if your RTD, if your resonant tunneling diode is sim, uh, simulated using a, a negative resistance in parallel with a diode capacitance and a series resistance, then we can uh, easily demonstrate the maximum uh, operation frequency and the capacitance. We can see that the maximum operation frequency increases as capacitance decreases. This is again something we have already uh, discussed in the case of HBTs, right? When we are uh, reducing the parasitic capacitance, the performance increases at higher frequencies. That, that is the same thing that we can observe in the case of RTDs. So uh, in order to determine this relation, what we can do is we, have, we can place a negative resistance in parallel with a diode capacitance and a series capacitance RS. Just similar to what we do in the case of diodes. And such a study has shown us that as uh, capacitance decreases, your operation frequency increases. And um, we basically uh, fabricate these resonant tunnel diodes from low semiconductors of very low doping and because of this uh, we can form wider depletion region between your barrier and the collector regions so uh, because and due to all these reasons uh, RTDs can be used to operate at high frequencies um, perhaps out of few terahertz range so far when we discussed mode fits and HBT, we were uh, discussing about devices which worked up to 100 gigahertz or even 400 gigahertz. Now when we reached R RTDs, the resonant tunneling diodes, they can work up to extremely high frequencies in the terahertz range. Yes, so uh, and we for that how, um, yeah sorry, for that we basically uh, fabricate RTDs using low doped semiconductors. See we can also uh, notice that these RTDs 
if they show uh, small values for negative resistance that is the difference between the point 2 and point 3 in the graph is small it shows that there is a, a sudden fall from the maximum of the uh, if of your current voltage curve and this can in fact result in high cutoff frequencies of operation so if your ndr value the negative res uh, differential resistance value is small that is there is a sudden fall from 2 to 3 it implies that you can get a very high cutoff frequency for operation so in fact rtds are the only electronic devices which can uh, operate up to maybe 1 terahertz which is very rare right but though these are their advantages we can also see that the power delivered by this rtd uh, maybe to an external load or uh, maybe to some antennas or waveguides are extremely small the power is very small because uh, normally their output voltage comes in the range of about 0.3 volt so this is very small value of voltage and because of this very low power output uh, power output we don't use rtds um, as an output to maybe antennas or any kind of waveguides so though rtds can work at very high frequencies we don't prefer them as an output to waveguides or antennas why they give very low output power even uh, the rtds are used for various other digital uh, applications in uh, for the manufacturing of rams oscillators shift registers low noise amplifications uh, digital converters adcs dacs a number of applications and uh, when it comes to logic applications we always prefer the value for pvcr which is a peak to value current ratio it should be uh, nearly 3 or even higher and the value of the current density must be very high when it comes in the uh, case of memory applications again pvcr must be nearly 3 and the value of the current density must be in the range of ampere few ampere per centimeter square and basically for high frequency applications we need very high value of current density jp and um, pvcr must be definitely greater than 2 so let's see a comparison of the um, various kinds of rtds the materials are different so in all this uh, if we just go through all the values we can see that the indium based rtds they are showing excellent features or excellent parameters compared to the conventional type of rtds so again uh, see these devices right these devices are still being researched we know that rtds can be manufactured for high frequency applications how can we improve their performance what all kind of materials can be used uh, to improve their performance researches are still being done this is not a very well established kind of field we are still uh, going on through the research and other studies related to these devices so this is a um, scope of the future right so that was our session about uh, today's session we discussed about what is resonant tunneling and what is resonant tunneling diode their applications and so on i hope the session is clear so far we have discussed about three devices the mode fit hbt and rtd the uh, effect control in the principle controlling rtd was also discussed the resonant tunnel i hope the session is clear please let me know if you have any doubts always ready to help thank you